Today's video is brought to you by Cars and Bids, my online enthusiast car auction site that recently sold this and this and this and this and this. This is the new 2023 Lexus RZ450e, and it's Lexus's first ever fully electric vehicle. It's a small luxury crossover, and it's going up against the Tesla Model Y, the Genesis GV60, the Audi Q4 e-tron, and the Volvo XC40 Recharge. Today, I'm going to review the new Lexus RZ and show you all of its quirks and features. All right, I'm going to start the quirks and features of the Lexus RZ450e with a quick overview of exactly what this vehicle is. Like I said, small luxury crossover and Lexus's very first ever fully electric vehicle. That's this, the RZ. In terms of pricing, there are two trim levels available right now. There's the base model, which they call the premium. That starts around $60,000, or you can upgrade to the top of the line luxury. That's this car starts around $65,000. Now, the RZ is based on the Toyota BZ4X and the Subaru Solterra, which are electric crossovers from those brands, but there are some significant differences. In addition to the Lexus brand name and the higher end, nicer materials, this comes standard with dual motor, all wheel drive and more power. The BZ4X and the Solterra have a base model front wheel drive version with about 200 horsepower. This is all wheel drive only and it has about 310 horsepower. So some big upgrades to the RZ compared to its lesser mainstream brand siblings. In terms of performance, zero to 60 in around five and a half seconds in the RZ450e, which isn't really all that good. And in fact, the same is true of the RZ's electric range figures. This is only rated for 220 miles on a single electric charge. Charge. And that's with the smaller 18 inch wheels that come standard on the base premium model. If you upgrade to the luxury and the nicer looking 20 inch wheels, you only get 196 miles on an electric charge. That's it, sub 200 miles, not impressive. And it's even less impressive when you consider the competition. Take, for example, the Tesla Model Y, which is undoubtedly the most popular car in this segment, compact luxury electric crossover. The entry-level Model Y does zero to 60 in about 4.8 seconds, faster than this car. It starts around $55,000 cheaper than this car, and it has an electric range of 330 miles, significantly longer than this car. Upgrade to the Tesla Model Y Performance, and you start around $59,000, still cheaper than this car. You have an electric range of a little over 300 miles, still further than this car, and zero to 60 drops to like three and a half seconds, which is much faster than this car. So the Model Y is cheaper, faster, and longer range, and it isn't just the Tesla. Take, for example, the Ford Mustang Mach-E, which is another fantastic vehicle in this segment. It starts around $59,000 cheaper than this car. It has a 312 mile range, longer than this car, and it does zero to 60 in the high four second range, again, faster than this car. And the high performance version of the Mach-E, the Mach-E GT, starts around $65,000, which is comparable to this car, and it does zero to 60 in 3.8, which is obviously much faster, and range is still a lot more. In fact, all of the rivals to the Lexus RZ have a longer range figure than this car. The Genesis GV60's range is about 250 miles and it's top version. The Volvo XC40 Recharge is 226, not dramatically more, but still more. And the Audi Q4 e-tron has a 265 mile max range, all better than the Lexus RZ, which drops all the way to 196 miles of range 
with these wheels. Now, I will say one benefit that the Lexus RZ has is styling. That's especially true compared to its mainstream brand siblings, the BZ4X and the Solterra, which are just plain ugly. They look weird, they are totally strange. That's not true of the RZ. This looks just like a regular Lexus crossover, except maybe the proportions are a little bit different. Now, it isn't the most beautiful vehicle in this segment, but that's subjective. Some might love it, but it certainly looks better than the BZ4X and the Solterra, and it definitely isn't ugly, although it is kind of striking, which some might like. But while that's an introduction to some of the general things about the Lexus RZ, there are also quite a few interesting quirks and features to cover, starting with the yoke. Yes, the RZ offers a yoke steering wheel, which you can see here. A yoke in a non-Tesla. I bring that up because, of course, Tesla introduced a yoke a couple of years ago to widespread criticism, complaint, controversy, praise by some. It's been very interesting, and now Lexus is offering one also, a yoke steering wheel on the RZ. Now, a couple of interesting points to note. For one, the yoke is optional. You don't have to get it. You can get a regular steering wheel like you see here, which just looks totally normal and reasonable, but you can get the yoke if you want. The other interesting thing about the yoke is cars that have it also have variable ratio steering, and that means as you start to turn the wheel, the car turns even more is the best way to describe it. Whereas a standard steering wheel, as you move the wheel, the car turns at the same basic rate, no matter how much you turn the wheel. Well, with the Lexus yoke, the more you turn the yoke, the more the car turns, which means you don't have to go hand over hand and get lost trying to find the yoke, which is a common complaint about Teslas. But there is a yoke steering wheel in the RZ and some other interesting quirks. For example, the doors are opened electronically. This looks like a normal door handle, but you go to open it and there's actually a little button pad in the place where you grab, you pull on that and the door pops open electronically. And that means on the inside, same deal, you don't have a traditional door handle, but instead this button, you push it and the door pops open. Although if you pull that little button in the opposite direction, it will manually release the door in case the electronic popper fails. Moving inside the RZ, many interesting quirks in here, but undoubtedly the coolest is the sunroof. You can see right now, it looks like just a dual panoramic sunroof front and rear, nothing unusual, but then you push this button here in the overhead console and look, it changes, it's gone. The sunroof is gone. And you can push this button over and over and make it sunny and then not sunny and then sunny and then not sunny again constantly. I love this feature. Now, this has been offered by a few automakers in the past. McLaren has had it, Ferrari, and Toyota also offers it on their Venza hybrid crossover. And now here it is in the Lexus RZ, this trick sunroof, non-sunroof button, which I think is so cool. Now, another interesting question in this interior is these seats are full Alcantara. No leather at all in the seat center part where you actually sit. There has been a push among some luxury brands to stop using leather entirely for environmental reasons, for animal reasons. And so I think this is a product of that. Full Alcantara seats, which you normally only see on high performance sports car racing bucket seats. Well, now here it is in a Lexus hybrid crossover. And next up, another interesting quirk is the center console lid, which isn't usually a place where you find interesting quirks, but indeed you push this button, it opens up towards the driver, which is cool, but you close it and then push a similar button on the other side and it opens up towards the passenger. The very same console lid can open in either direction, meaning that it is magic. <laughs> <laughs> no, but really, it is kind of cool. Also interesting here in the center console is the shift lever situation in this car, which is unusual. You have this black circle in the center of a silver ring. In order to shift into gear, you push down on the silver ring and then move it to the right, and that's drive. Push down and move it to the left, and that's reverse. Or just push down and hold it, and you've found neutral. And then park is a button on top of all of these things. There's a lot of interesting, weird new gear levers in the market now. 
and that is certainly one of them. But beyond all of the interesting and kind of weird quirks of this car, let's talk functionality, and specifically, let's talk about the center screen, which is huge. 14-inch center infotainment touchscreen, and it has some pros and cons. The biggest benefit is, well, it's huge, very visible, very easy to tap what you want to. Nice to see a large, easily touchable, usable screen in here, especially considering Lexus doesn't have the best reputation for infotainment after the remote touch interface mouse pad situation that prior models had. Now you have a big, good touch screen, high resolution, and it's great. However, there are a few drawbacks. One is that you can't separate it into multiple screens, meaning you can't have like your map over on the left side and your radio on the right side, so you can't do two things at once, which is always a bit of a complaint with screens that don't offer that, since sometimes it's nice to see two things at once. The other complaint is that it integrates the climate controls into the screen. Rather than physical buttons, you actually have to look down and kind of figure out where you're pressing, but they did it as well as I've seen any automaker do. For one thing, the climate control temperature, that's still a physical dial, but it's mounted on the screen, which is really cool. You just twist it, and then you can see the temperature in the center of the screen. That's the air temperature. You also do still have physical buttons for the defroster, so stuff you might need to have done right away. You don't want to go into the screen. You just press the button, and it turns on. The rest of the climate controls are on the screen, but they're always fixed in the same place, so you know where they are. And the heated seat, cooled seat, heated steering wheel controls are in the screen, which usually I complain about, but the cool thing here is you can turn them on auto. So you can turn on like auto seat control and auto steering wheel control, and it will turn on the heated and cooled seats as needed based on whether it gets too warm or too cool and it needs to heat you up or cool you down. So you don't have to turn on that stuff manually, which is a pretty cool idea. And it means you don't actually have to interact with the cooled and heated seat and the heated steering wheel buttons all that often. Now, the other important screen in this car is the gauge cluster screen directly ahead of the steering wheel. And I have to say, it's not really all that great. Basically, every other new car offers more functionality from its gauge cluster screen than new Toyota and Lexus models. You can't really do much there. You don't have a map. You don't have the radio. You can't really see all that much in your gauge cluster screen. But with that said, this car does have a heads-up display that has a lot of great features. It's all controlled on the steering wheel. The left controls on the wheel correspond to changing the music, and that shows up in your heads-up display, as you can see. You can adjust the volume here, the track, the station you're listening to. All of that stuff can be done in the heads-up display. And similarly, the right side of the steering wheel, those buttons, they control your adaptive cruise control system, or they control the heads-up display itself, the positioning, the resolution, etc. So you do have a lot of information projected onto the windshield ahead of you directly in your line of sight, just not all that much in the gauge cluster screen. To me, the heads-up display doesn't entirely make up for the lack of stuff in the gauge screen, but it does help because there's a lot of stuff that you're directly seeing in that heads-up display projection. And next we move on to the back seat in the Lexus RZ, which is surprisingly roomy, actually. I have a ton of legroom and knee room in here, which is something I almost never say about compact crossovers, but there's a lot of space in here. Now, the reason for that is probably it's an electric vehicle, so you don't have to have as much space up front for the engine, which means you can pull the interior out a little bit more and devote more space to occupants, which this exactly does. Shockingly roomy in here, which is really nice to see. Now, the other interesting thing back here is the back seat is also full Alcantara. It was a surprise up front to see fully Alcantara seats, but here in back, this giant rear bench is all Alcantara, which frankly is an even bigger surprise. No leather in this car. That's not the goal. Other notable stuff in the back seat of the RZ have heated rear seats, which is a nice luxury touch. And next to that, you can see USB-C ports for charging, and you also have a cigarette lighter style port below that for even more charging. Also kind of nice, center seat legroom is unimpeded by a big hump in the floor like you see in a lot of cars. Because this is an electric vehicle with dual motors, you don't need a drive shaft running down the center of the car to steal your legroom, so there's actually decent legroom in the middle back seat. One disappointing drawback back here, you do have a rear sunroof, but you can't control it from the back. That sunroof opaque see-through button control is only for the front seat occupants, so in the rear, you just have to go along with whatever they select. 
And next we move on to the cargo area in the RZ. And you can see back here, actually a surprisingly decent amount of cargo space for a compact crossover. Again, not having the engine up front means you can pull out the interior and devote more space to stuff like the cargo area. And there's even more cargo space under the floor. You lift this up and you can see more space to put stuff if you want. You also have these little straps on the side of the cargo area, which appear to be there so that you can carry a pen in your cargo area if that's what you want to do. Now, one other notable item in the cargo area is the cargo cover. Of course, when it's in place, it covers your stuff so nobody can see it and wants to break in, but you can also remove it and fold it, which is a pretty cool idea because that means the cargo cover can easily be folded and then placed inside the car so it doesn't have to get left behind like a lot of hard cargo covers do. That's a neat little trick in new Toyota and Lexus models. But anyway, aside from the cargo area, Let's talk about the rear of the RZ. A couple of interesting things back here. For one, the rake of the rear window. Very steep, almost kind of sedan-like rather than an upright rear window like a lot of SUVs have. In fact, you don't even have a rear wiper back here like most SUVs. I guess because of the angle, it doesn't need it. Also interesting in the back, you have these two little panels kind of jutting out over the rear window from the roof line. Not exactly sure why they're there. Maybe to just give a more distinct look, which they certainly do. Also notable in the back, you can see Lexus is written out across the rear. This is a new thing Lexus has just started doing on some of its models, as opposed to just the Lexus L badge. I'm not sure if they thought maybe not enough people knew what that was, but they've started spelling it out in individual letters so you know when you're following a Lexus. And finally, a couple of interesting things up front. For one thing, the grill. Lexus seems to have finally ditched its weird spindle grill that appeared on so many of its cars, kind of a gaping mouth, strange angled thing in front. But on the RZ, they've kept the general shape of the spindle grill, but well, it's not a grill. This is an electric car. You don't really need a grill up here. So instead, it's just a big painted panel in that same shape. Looks, well, I'm not really sure. I think it looks okay. It's not ugly like some previous Lexus models, but it's maybe a little weird to have this big body colored panel up front. And by the way, speaking of the front, there's no front storage area in this car. You can see under the hood, there's mechanical components, just like you would get in a gas powered car with a combustion engine up there. You don't have extra storage in front. Now, some people may complain about this, but most automakers I talk to tell me that their surveys show most people don't actually use their front trunks and electric vehicles when they are available. So not having one one, not really that big of a deal. It could add a little practicality, but well, the car's practical enough. All right, driving the Lexus RZ, an electric crossover. <laughs> So, like I said, this it, to me, this is like the best version of the BZ4X Solterra RZ situation. You got all-wheel drive standard, you got decent power standard, and it doesn't look weird. So from a Toyota standpoint, this is a great electric crossover. But from a general market standpoint, it seems to me to not quite be so great. Specifically, I am surprised at that combination of range, price point, um, and performance. It's just not fast enough and it doesn't have good enough range to justify the price that they're charging. Now, Toyota would respond to this, I suspect. Lexus would respond to this by saying, yeah, but it's a Lexus. And indeed, there is some truth to that. The Model Y does have more range and better acceleration, but it's not all that well built. If we're being totally honest, the interiors of Teslas are just not all that nice. They're minimalist, which you can think is kind of cool, but like they're not nice. They're not like Luxurious. This car has a nice interior, it really does. Surprisingly so, actually, because I think the BZ4X and the Solterra are a little cost cutted, a little cheap. This car doesn't feel like that. It feels like it has nice materials everywhere, nice Alcantara seats, very comfortable, nice big screen. The steering wheel feels nice. It's not leather, it's Toyota synthetic leather, but it's hand stitched. You have this nice heads up display. This car is definitely built better 
than a Tesla Model Y. But the question is, is it better? Well, it offers the better build quality and some people are going to be really swayed by Toyota Lexus reliability. There's a lot of people who only will buy Toyotas and Lexuses because they're reliable, they're durable, and they're known for that. And going on a limb and buying a you know Tesla might not feel like the right thing to do. And some people are willing to give up a little bit of range and give up some performance and pay a little more for that. But it's not most people. I think most people, especially people who are buying electric vehicles, are kind of early adopter type people, and they're not necessarily looking for a more expensive, kind of like less <laughs> powerful, less everything vehicle just to get this allure of Toyota reliability. There are definitely some nice things about this car, but 196 miles of range is just like not acceptable at this point, given where rivals are at. I mean, Tesla is well over 300, 330 miles of range. So is the Mach-E at 312, and this is at 196. As someone who does a lot of road trips, that's just not, that's not, a, that's not enough, that's not, you can't go anywhere, it's just not enough. This kind of becomes sort of an around the city type kind of commuter vehicle, as opposed to something like a Tesla you could take on a longer trip. Now, you might be wondering about the driving feel of this car. Well, it drives like a crossover. I'm not talking much about the driving experience because frankly, there's not all that much to talk about. Um, acceleration is fine. I wouldn't say it's great. Zero to 60 in five and a half seconds is relatively quick, but for an electric vehicle, it's not really all that fast. Most EVs are really fast. And so our, our, our mind, our preconceived notions of what's fast has kind of switched with an electric car. And this is only sort of fast. For the rest of the drive, I mean, it's a Lexus crossover. You're not getting like amazing track-like handling. It's predictable. It drives predictably. It's The seating position is good. You're actually seating higher than I expected in this car. In the BZ4X and the Solterra, they feel a little lower. For some reason, this feels a little bit higher. You feel like you have a little bit more of a commanding view of the road. But I mean, everything kind of operates as designed. The brakes are, are predictable. The steering is predictable. Again, acceleration is like fine, but not amazing. Predictable, some might say. It just drives like a Lexus crossover that happens to have an electric powertrain. And for a lot of people, that will sell them on this car. That alone will sell them on this car. They're coming out of an RX. They want something that's electric. Here it is. It just could use some upgrades, range, performance, or maybe a more reasonable price before it's really competitive. And so that's the 2023 Lexus RZ. It's, well, fine actually, only fine. The technology is decent, the performance is decent, the range is well, disappointing, and it's pretty pricey considering its faults. There are better electric rivals on the market, but at least Lexus is finally here with an EV, and I'm sure more are coming. Anyway, now it's time to give the RZ a Doug score. And the Doug score is here, 56 out of 100, which puts the RZ here against some EV crossover rivals. Frankly, the RZ is merely average. It has good power, but not as good as a lot of its competitors that cost similar money. Its styling is a bit odd, and most importantly, its range numbers are quite poor versus basically everything else. It's also expensive for what it offers. A good contingent of people will buy the RZ because it's a Lexus, and they've been waiting for a Lexus EV. But much like the Toyota BZ. 4X and Subaru Solterra that share a platform with the RZ, this just isn't as good as other electric cars. The Volvo C40 Recharge is good. The Hyundai Ioniq 5 is great. The Ford Mustang Mach-E and Tesla Model Y are fantastic. I'd get any of those over the RZ, and I hope Toyota and Lexus give us some better EVs soon before the market entirely passes them by.